Okay, so we're going to start with question two. Oh, of course, this one. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I'm going to do this whole thing in Excel. Um, and Oh, yeah. And yes, the video. Yes, I uploaded the wrong video. The correct one is up there now. Um, I groaned about this problem because this problem is just such a fun problem. Um, not because I expected anyone to know it. So uh, let's see, date, balance, uh, number of days, and then balance times days. I'm going to have to duck out real fast and make sure my little sick five-year-old is doing okay in a second. But let's uh, let's get this set up. I would encourage you all to do the same thing that I've done here, create a nice little um, table in Excel to put this all together. And the first thing to do is uh, just get in the dates. So December 1, and then December 5, and then December 8, and then December, oops, 14. And December, I don't know why it suddenly stopped that. 23, December 26. Uh, and then, of course, it might be worth noting that December has... Uh, uh-oh, 28 days. Okay, sweets. So start there and then see if you can't figure out the balance. I'll give you a hint. The balance from the last or the beginning balance is 1302.63. And see if you can't figure out how to get these balances. I'll be back in like two seconds. Five minutes, two minutes, three minutes. Okay. So, how'd you do? Um, did you all do this? Equals, select the previous balance, minus 250. And then equals, select that previous balance, now plus 69. 
and then equals that previous balance plus 87.5, and then equals previous balance plus 56, and then equals previous balance plus 195. Is that what you all had? I mean, that's like the nice way to use Excel to calculate the balances, which is why I'm using Excel. You could have typed those things in a calculator. How are we doing? So for days, do you all remember how to calculate the days? Okay, so I, my number, my last two aren't matching what you have, and I'm trying to figure out what I did wrong. Well, let's see if I did it wrong. 56, 195, 87.50. So I'm seeing that I did add the correct numbers for, for my last two. Okay. I just Take your time. Go ahead. I probably just typed it in wrong. No worries. Y'all let me know when, when you're ready to talk about how to calculate the number of days. Okay, mine matches now. Nice. Um, okay, so for the number of days, you can subtract, like for this one, you can do five minus one, which is four. So there's four days between December 1st and December 5th. And then eight minus five is three, and 14 minus eight is six, and 23 minus, 14 is nine, ouch, and 26 minus 23 is three. But then for the last one, we can't do 31 because there's 31 days in December minus 26, which is five, because that doesn't count December 31 in the number of days. Because the balance, it remains this balance through the 31st. And then January 1st is when the fees are going to go into effect, and at least on the, the way the scenario is set up here. So this is really six days that it remains this, because on December 31st, we add that day. Whereas on, on all of these, when we subtract 5 minus 4, it, the fifth day, December 5th, isn't included in the count of days, because that's when the balance changes. We can do a quick check that we have the exact number of days in December as they're supposed to be. So I'm doing the equal and the sum thing. And there, oops, 31 days, perfect, we're good. Let me pause there, y'all give me some feedback. Is that is that good and helpful or not so much?
Okay. So then this is literally just take the balance, multiply it times the number of days. So when, this is another reason why I like using Excel because I just do equals. I select this cell, I hit the asterisk key for multiplication, I select the other cell, and now it's going to multiply. And then we just drag that down and it does all the multiplications for us. Um, so that's the balance times the days. And then we're going to write a fraction. Can you show how to do that again real quick? Most definitely. I'm sorry. No, no, don't apologize. So I just hit the equal button to tell Excel, here comes a formula. I select the B2 cell or the cell where that balance is. Hit your asterisk to show multiplication and then select the number of days cell and that's it. Hit enter and you get that that balance. And then if you look in the bottom right corner, there's that little square. In mine, it's green. So I put my cursor over that, changes to this black plus sign. I click and hold and then drag, and it's going to copy this formula that we did here down to each of these, except it's going to switch the cells. So you see it says B3, C3, B4, C4. B5, C5, et cetera. So it, it, it um, did what I wanted it to. It made us multiply all these together. Okay, for some reason in my Excel, it's only showing me one decimal point. Like, oh, how do I? You can make this bigger and it'll show you more. I did and it's not. <laughs> then the other option is you can select them all. And there's this button here. So this gives you less decimal point places. This one gives you more. Okay. And the nice thing with Excel is whether you see the decimal places or not, it has them there. Um, so when whenever you do your calculations, like when we're gonna get the total here, the sum of all these balances times days, we get um, it, it has all the decimals in it. I suddenly lost my train of thought. So I did that fast. Let me do that again. So the thing we want next, what we need to get the average daily balance is we need to add up all these balance times days. So I'm doing the equals and then the sum and I'm using parentheses or you can double click it. And then I'm just drag selecting all the cells where the balance days times days were. And this gets us um, the sum of all the balances times all the days. And then for the last one, we're going to get the average to get the average daily balance. We need to divide that sum by the number of days in December. So I'm just going to do equals select that total and divide it by 31. Let me pause there and you all let me know if, if, you're, if you know what's going on or don't know what's going on. What you need, baby? Did it
Okay. Is everyone good so far? I think on this one, we, we really only need two decimal places. I don't know why I say I think that is all we need. So we did all this work just to get that the average daily balance was $1,243.11. Are you good from there? So you all know what to do for the next two questions because we need we use this number to do the next stop. There we go. Okay. I will leave you all to that then. Um, any other questions before we move on? I think we did this one in the videos and I, sorry, I did put up the wrong video. Um, thank you to those of you that caught that and emailed me. Um, let's do three, four then. But first, maybe we should rewrite all the formulas we need from 3.3. Three. Um, okay, so we did this for 3.1 and 3.2, and I may have added the stuff for 3.3, three, but I didn't add them all. Um, these formulas uh, you should have in your reference sheet for the final exam and or it might be helpful to have them uh, sitting around as you're, as you're buying your car for project three. Uh, I'll just label these three, three stuff. So the big one that we started, well, no, let's see. So there's the fine, oh, okay. Okay, Peanut. Um, oh, so how about this? <laughs> Cause I gotta go help my daughter for a second. How about I have you all Turn to page, whatever this page is in the three, four. Um, read, um, read this paragraph about student loans and do numbers one and two. Um, note simple interest. And then this is just a question. All right, so try that out while I go check on my little sweetheart.
you'd have to bring your own kids. Okay. Sorry, y'all. Um, did y'all get that calculation for number one? Um, so do you remember, okay, let's see, what are you all saying? Uh, 442, love it. Simple interest is calculated as the principal times the rate times the time. So if you needed $6,500 to pay for schooling, um, the way we would calculate that interest is this way. And right now interest is still 0% for uh, federal student loans which is what you would get from filling out your FAFSA, but it's about to change. January 1st, they will start charging interest. Um, and then there's also, I don't know if you all have student loans, there's also that $10,000 loan forgiveness thing that's kind of going around through the court systems and all the rest. You should log into your student loan places. I'm guessing it's Nelnet. I have student loans, if you're wondering how I know all this and make sure you apply for that $10,000 discount or 20,000, depending upon what kinds of loans you have. Um, take advantage of that. Okay, so why would we use 365.25 days in a year for financial calculations? Anyone have a clue of where the 0.5 comes from? Leap year. Every four years, February has 28 days, right? Y'all watch Modern Family? They do a whole episode where I think the guy's name is Phil. He loves leap year day because it's like a free day. And then they have a really funny sort of thing happen on that special day for him. It's like a bonus day. So if we take um, every four years has an extra day in it and we define that uh, one day by four, we get 0.25 um, days spread out over those four years. So this is, uh, we'll just say leap year. And that's because the Roman calendar, when they set it up, had some issues, right? So they, there's, you know, this is all based off of, um, the rotation of the earth around the sun uh, and its its other rotation, right? So how long does it take to go around the sun and all that mess? So whatever, there it is. We're gonna use that. And we're gonna find the daily interest rate that accrues on that 6,500 loan. So what, we're, what you're being asked to do here is figure out dollars accruing, meaning dollars you're gonna owe the federal government divided by uh, days. And we want this as the word daily, we want it as a unit rate, right? So we take that 442, this is to connect back to units one and two, and we're gonna divide it by the number of days in one year. So this is per one year, we're gonna divide it by 365.25. Hmm. Uh, Calculator does all that for me. So each day you owe another dollar twenty-one to the federal government on top of what you already borrowed. So then our author says, oh, "Well, how much interest accrues per month?" And he used to have us calculate different months because some months are 27 days in length, some months are 30 days in length, some months are 37 days in length. Where did he get this 30.44? I'm just gonna guess. Let's see, 365.25 days in a year, 12 months in a year. So if we get the average days per month, my guess is that these two numbers divided will equal, yeah, there it is, 30.44 days per month on average. So 
It's a funky little thing. Um, I remember when my first daughter was born, I like from the beginning, I could say she is this many hours old or she is this many days old and then she's this many months old. And then uh, it got a little weird because you can like your daughter say, I forget what day she was born on, like a Monday, let's say. And so you would count every seven for every week's old. And then if you do four times seven, that's how many months. But then, you know, like some months have more than 28 days in them. So, you know, that's all a little funky. Okay, so how much would accrue per month? Well, if this is the dollars per one day, and we want the total, the average per month, we would just multiply these two rates together. The days are going to cancel, and we're going to get dollars per month. Love it. Uh, thank you for that answer. So 30.44 times 1.21 equals, what was it again? 36. 0.83 dollars per one month. Um, that's, you know, that's like Net Netflix and Hulu and HBO Max subscription per month you're being charged. Uh, just an interest because you had to borrow money to go to school. Okay, um, so this is a simplified daily interest formula used for, um, for these types of calculations. We just do the principal times the interest rate, divide it by the days in a year. And then if we want the monthly interest amount, we do the daily interest rate. So this answer times 30.44. And that's how we get the, the different charges. It's two different ways to look at it. So our next goal is to figure out how much money would we be charged in interest over our while we're in school. So what happens um, is the your payments are deferred while you're in school, meaning you don't have to pay them. There's no penalty. There's no like late payment um, charge or whatever. But the interest is still building as you stay in school. Simple interest rate, which is nice that it's simple instead of compound while you're in school so that you're not being charged interest on top of interest. Uh, so Arthur says, well, let's let's say you started in August. That's a typical fall start day. And then you graduate in May. That's a typical spring graduation. And it's going to take you three years and nine months to do this. And then you've got six months after graduation that you um, can defer your, your payments. That's a very common thing. The government recognizes that you may not have a job the moment you graduate from school. And so they give you some time to find work so that you can start paying back the money you borrow, right? So we're asked to figure out how many total months is this? Well, three years uh, can be converted to months by doing this 12 months per one year thing. And then we're going to add to that the nine months and the six months. So there's 36 months of interest accruing from the three years, plus the 15 here of those two. So we're going to end up with 41 months that were being charged interest while we're in school. Um, now, this is an overly simplified version of this problem because you're only, you should only borrow the amount of money you need to pay for the bill that semester, right? So you don't want to borrow all of the money for all three years because then you're being charged interest all three years. Whereas if your first semester, you only needed $1,000, just borrow 1000 pay the bill. And then the second semester, just borrow what you need because that'll, the beginning interest will, the interest you're being charged will be delayed each time. Plus, if you borrow more than you need, you'll spend that money on something else. I know that from experience. Okay, how much interest will accrue before payments begin? Well, it's this 41 months times the monthly interest rate that we calculated here, 3683. So $36.83 happening per one month times our 41 months. Oops. What do we get here? Um, yikes. 
$1,510.03. So you get charged this much extra money because you didn't have the money uh, to pay for your bill when you started school. Okay, um, how are we doing? Hi, Latoya, we're on, um, I wish I could tell you a page number. We're in the textbook doing the interest problem from 3-4, somewhere in here. Page 310, thank you, Jennifer. Okay, so now that we have the student interest, we, we get the total amount of um, the total amount of money. So this is let's let's label this. This is um, interest charged. We'll say it that way while in school. And and the, the three months afterwards. So this is the deferred payment time. Um, if you were following the COVID stuff, um, what the federal government did is they gave all student loan borrowers uh, like a free deferred time. So no one had to pay student loans while in school or while just during this COVID period, they kept extending it. It ends January 1st and they dropped the interest rate to zero for all of those loans. So not only did you not have to pay, but interest was you weren't being charged interest on that time. So it was a grace period, essentially, um, and it's the best kind of grace period. If you've looked at the fine print on your student loans, there's always like two years worth, worth of grace period when you graduate, where you can say, hey, I'm having some financial hardships. I can't afford to pay my student loans. Give me some grace. And the government does that, but they still charge you interest during those deferred payment times. So this COVID time was a was like the best thing, and then they 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 um, they passed that bill that forgives ten thousand dollars for a bunch of people and twenty thousand dollars for another bunch of people. Um, we'll see if it gets through the courts. The, uh, there's a particular party that's not very happy about that for some reason. Not sure why. Um, okay, so. Here's the next thing that often surprises me that students know, don't know the difference between these two and which one's best. So there's two types of loans you can get from the government, a subsidized loan and an unsubsidized. So the subsidized loan means you are not charged the interest. In fact, the government pays the interest on the loan for you while you're in school. So when you graduate, and when payments begin, you only owe the exact amount you borrowed. So this $1,500 we just calculated, the government would pay that for you and you don't have to pay that. Um, these types of loans, I believe the most common is the Pell Grant. Um, there's other, I'm sure there's other types, but that's, if you can get subsidized loans, those are the ones you want. They're the cheapest in terms of what you'll have to pay back. The unsubsidized loans means you still got money from the government or wherever you got the money from, but the interest that is growing while you're not making payments, you are on the hook for that. You owe that back. Um, so that's, that's not fun. Okay, so now the, now the problem is what happens once we have to start making payments? Well, we use the monthly payment formula to calculate it. And the interest switch switches from simple interest to compound interest, which is what you want, because if it was simple interest, you would be continually paying $1,500 every year until you paid the loan off. Whereas instead, with switching it to compound interest, as you make payments, the principal decreases, and so does the interest that you're being charged. Now, our author tells us that most student loans are 10 years in length. In fact, I think all government loans are typically 10 years. Although I was just looking at my loan repayment options and you can do some 30 year terms. There's, there's a bunch of different repayment options for student loans. We're, for this course, we're gonna stick to the 10 year uh, term, which means the monthly formula we looked at with the car, remember it was this,
to the negative n. We have now just changed that to 120 because for 10 years, there are 12 months in those 10 years, each of those 10 years, that means there'd be 120 payments you make, 120 months worth of payments. So um, this is the formula we're gonna use for student loans and we are gonna do some calculations. So let's start with, for that first loan, what is the principal amount at the time payment begins? So for unsubsidized loans, that's what this is implying. This is an unsubsidized loan. The principal is the amount borrowed plus the interest that has accrued. That was the $15,510.03. So when our loans go into repayment, we owe more than we borrowed. Sucks. It's $8,000. Ten dollars and three cents. So it's kind of the opposite of the down payment thing for cars. Remember, with cars, we subtracted the down payment because that's money we gave the dealership um, to decrease the amount we had to borrow. It's kind of like good faith that we'll be able to pay, pay off the loan at the end. Banks like to see that. Um, this is the opposite of that. We're adding in the interest because it's what's charged to us. Uh, and so our principal goes up. So this is the P. Let's now find uh, the monthly payment. So how much are we going to pay a month for the next 10 years of our life when once we graduate and payments begin? Recall that the interest rate was 6.8%, uh, which is a little high. That's not a that's not a fun interest rate, but it is what it is. This is the part that's new, this negative 120. It's not really new, but it's just always understood that that's what it is. So pop over to Desmos. And one thing I don't think I've shown you all, if you hit the division button, Desmos immediately builds a fraction for you. Sometimes that's nice and you don't have to worry about a parentheses. Oops, I should make it so you can see what I'm doing. Here we go. Um, let me pause here. You all tell me if you were able to get that. You're able to type it in, whatever thing you're using. $92.18 per month for 120 months. Ugh. So, um, the author adds this other language in here. It says, when interest on an unsubsidized student loan is not paid during college, we say that the interest is capitalized. I just got an announcement from my student loans that interest will be capitalized, I think yesterday. Rats, I was gonna pay it so it wouldn't be capitalized. That means that interest gets added into the principal, the principal be, and makes the principal larger. And then you're, you're being charged interest off of that principal. So you don't want this because it means you're being charged more interest. Um, which of course creates larger payments, as he says. 
So if it's not capitalized, it means someone paid that money while you were in college. Subsidized ones are paid by the government. Unsubsidized ones, you could pay. So you could figure out, like for this scenario, we could take this 1510.03 and we could divide that by 41, which we knew this, we could pay the 3683 per month while we're in college. The government lets you do that. And then at the end, you would have uh, subsidized your own loan. You still pay that $1,500, but then you won't be paying the interest on it. If you can do it, that's ideal. We're going to calculate how much money that would actually save you, and then we could decide if it's worth it. So um, this is a capitalized interest monthly payment because we added in the 1500 right? So maybe let's label that. Interest was capitalized. So we're going to do this same calculation, but just on the 6,500, meaning the non-capitalized interest. I'll write it out, but then since I have Desmos up, I can just change one number in Desmos and we're good to go. Most students by the end of this unit have this formula memorized, especially once you get through Alex. So I'll skip over to Desmos. I'll change this number to 6,500. Actually, let me just copy and paste. Control C, Control V, 6,500. Ooh, $74.80 for one month. All right, so that's the new monthly payment if we didn't have to add in that $1,500. How much better is that? Let's find the difference between those two, 92.18 minus 74.80. That's a savings of 1738 per month. So 1738 per one month. Less if interest is not capitalized. Come on now. So let's let's see how much is that actually going to save us over the length of the loan. So remember it's 120 payments that we're doing this. So if we take this $17.38 and multiply by 120 we save $2,085.06 over the entire um, lifetime of the loan. How are we doing, y'all? We'll just say total saved. It's always a little depressing when you look at this stuff, right? Because it's like, this is what I'm doing right now. Okay. Um, let's, let's go ahead. He leads us through calculating the total you pay. Let's just do it ourselves. So if we want to say the total cost of the loan. Hang on. Sweet girl, can you turn that sound down a little bit? I'll turn it down. So um, if we want the total cost, uh, we'll say for the unsubsidized loan. We're going to take that monthly payment. 92.18, that's the cost per month, multiply it times 120. So we borrowed $6,500. We got out of school in 42 months, like three years, nine months and six months. And then we started paying it 120 times. We made that $92 payment and we ended up paying 11,000. 
yikes, <laughs> we only borrowed 6,500. We almost paid double the amount we borrowed. Painful, right? Um, was it worth it? You better have a job that pays more than when you started or a job that makes you happier because you have it. Otherwise, you just threw away $11,000, right? And then here's the total cost for the subsidized loan, meaning the one the government paid for you, paid the interest for you. That's the 7480 times 120. So 8,976, not quite as bad, not quite as extra, right? Um, obviously you want the unsubsidized, you want the subsidized loan because of the total savings. That's the 2,008560. $2, but here's the total cost. Now, if we subtract the 6,500, we get the finance charge. So we pay $4,561.60. That's how much extra we have to pay because we didn't have the $6,500 up front to pay for our school loan. Whereas for the subsidized, it's only $2,476. Um, I say only, that's, that's a nice chunk of money. Um, so the author says, ask you to think about this. Now, the key question, um, is like, so if you didn't have the option for a subsidized loan, is it worth it to pay 36.83 per month while in school? To save 2000, how much was it? 2000. 85.60 over 10 years. Is it worth it? There's no right or wrong answer, in my opinion. Most people tend to say, oh yeah, I, I would rather have $2,000 in my bank account, uh, so I would rather pay this. But then there's also realities of like, if you don't have 36.83 in your budget, if you can't afford to make this payment while in school and still feed yourself and your family and drive to work and pay for textbooks and all the rest, then you can't do it. The other thing to think about is what this amount is, is uh, let's see, what was it? What did we say? 1738. So you're doing this to save 2085 over 10 years. Another way to think about that is you're paying 3683 to save 1780 per month. For 10 years. Right? So it's it's cutting in half. It's roughly cutting in half the amount of payments you'd pay you, you'd have to pay later. I don't know. What do you all think? Should you subsidize or should you not? So, you know, think about it. It's going to be a question on the final exam. There's no right or wrong answer. There's just good reasoning and bad reasoning. So make sure when you when you write up an answer to something like this, it's also in the project. I'm looking for you to talk through the real the numbers that you are dealing with and make your decision based off of the numbers. Um, yes, I want to save the 2085-60. I know I'd be able to afford the 3683 extra a month up front to save this over the long term. Or no, it's not worth it. I'd rather have not have the stress of scraping together this amount of money while in school. Um, I'm gonna have a better paying job when I get out. So I'll be able to afford the 1780 extra that I'm gonna have to pay when I get out. Um, that's the difference between paying $92.18 per month versus $74.80 per month. Okay, so let's talk about homes. Uh, when you buy a house, uh, the loan you get is called a mortgage. That's just the name someone came up with it. And these tend to be long-term loans. 
like student loans. They are often a 30 year loan, but you can get 30 and 10 and 15. There's all kinds of different lengths of loans. And then there's really two basic types of mortgages, a fixed rate mortgage where like you get a mortgage lock and the bank says you will forever be charged this interest rate unless you refinance which you refinance to get a lower interest rate or to get equity out of your house. Meaning you've got your house is worth a certain amount of money. You you owe a certain amount and you borrow the difference between the amount you the amount the house is worth and the amount you owe. So that's the fixed rate. And then there's the adjustable rate, which is kind of a scary one. It's kind of what caused the housing bubble and crash is that a lot of people were getting adjustable rates. Well, it's not really, that's part of it. And these interest rates are determined by the feds. So if you've been following the market right now, um, the uh, the Federal Reserve, I forget the name of the Treasury Department has been raising interest rates to try to control inflation. Um, and the housing market got crazy. Cool, you found it, you can use it, right? Because Everyone needs to buy a house. Lots of people were leaving cities and other places to buy like a nice family home because they're working from home. And so housing prices skyrocketed. M mortgage rates were super low. And so people were paying. I was trying to buy a house recently too. So I experienced this. I put an offer on a house that had been on the market for two days. And there were like five other offers on the house. And most of them were cash. Because that's, you know, people prefer cash. It's easier to get cash. You know, you don't have any stipulations about what has to be done with the house. You just hand them all the money. So things got crazy. Well, now the feds are raising the interest rate. So mortgages are costing more. Uh, and that's what happens with this adjustable rate mortgage. If you have that kind of mortgage and the feds raise the interest rate, your interest rate is going to go up, which means your mortgage payments are going to go up. So that's a scary one. Um, often, um, often the adjustable rates start with a lower interest rate than the fixed rate. Uh, and then what you would do, because sometimes that's helpful if you can't afford, say, the other one, you could get this and then hopefully um, refinance that adjustable into a fixed rate if there was a really good one. So that's this. The pros and cons of buying a house, typically uh, what folks say is you should buy a house if you can live there, like, I don't know, five to 10 years, it pays off. Otherwise you're paying, you have to pay taxes, you have house upkeep and all that when you buy a house. Whereas if you rent a place, the upkeep and all the rest of the stuff of the house is on the owner, taxes and all the rest. You have to live somewhere no matter what. So um, it may feel like owning the house is always the better option because your payments are being paid to yourself, sort of, but that's not true, really. At the beginning of your mortgage, most of your payments go to the interest, not the principal. So you're really just renting the home from the bank at the beginning. Eventually it flips over and you're starting to pay down the interest. For example, the house I'm in right now, uh, I think my first mortgage payment was in September. And when I looked at how much principal I had paid, it was 64 cents. In my mortgage, I, maybe I shouldn't be saying this, but I'm just going to say it. My mortgage was $910. And so I paid $910 to the bank and 64 of that dollars is, in, is my investment that I get to keep. That's my equity in the house. Yikes, right? So if you're living somewhere short term, renting is typically better. Typically. I chose to buy in here because I don't know if you all been trying to look at rents in Jackson. It's impossible. This I have a like a two bedroom, one bathroom with a small backyard house for that $910. It was like $1,500 in rent to find that in Jackson. So, you know. There you have it. Okay, so let's work through this. Um, here we've got a couple scenarios. Where are you at, Latoya? Are you are you in Jackson too? 
I, I mean, it, I think it's just rent everywhere. Oh, you're in Louisiana. Okay. It's bad. Yeah. Nice. I mean, it's just, I, people that can't afford to buy a house, like I was, I could barely afford to buy this. You're, you're screwed because the rent, the rent has been just going up and landlords are like kicking people out. Right. You're like, oh yeah. Yeah. And you're like, Ugh. yeah, it's painful. It's painful. I hope things stabilize really soon or or maybe i don't know it's and having a place to live is just a basic need right everyone needs housing stability to feel safe and to yeah Ugh. okay so let's let's talk through the numbers uh the calculations here um just like a car a house has a down payment unlike a car we typically do a percentage down payment. And for mortgages, um, you want to give 20% down payment. Now, the reason is, if you have 20% of the value of the house, and you pay that, you are not charged what's called um, mortgage insurance. It's the PMI. I forget what the first word is. Maybe it's principal mortgage insurance. And what that insurance is, is you're paying to insure the bank in case you default. So you're paying extra to pay less on the house. So you pay less up front. Oh, did you step on your foot? I'm sorry. Did you step on your leg? Oh, no. Um, you, you, you pay less up front so that you can get into the house, but then you pay that insurance until you hit the 20% down payment mark. Okay, there's some Band-Aids in the bathroom drawer. So uh, most problems in this class you're gonna encounter is this 0.2, remember that's the percentage time. And then the, the price of the home is this 224,900. That's the other thing that happened. Home prices went way up. And what's even worse, what's kind of maddening is that a lot of the homes, like at least in bigger cities, are being purchased by investment companies to turn into rentals. And so then that just jacks up the prices for all of all of us that are just trying to live and they just make tons of money. And then it it anyone that's in the low income bracket kind of gets forced out, forced into different places and it's a big, it's a big mess. Okay, so if we wanna buy this house and not be charged mortgage insurance, we need $44,980 $44, cash in our bank account that we give to the bank and then they loan us the difference. So this is the, this is the down payment. The principal that we're gonna borrow is the difference between these two. Now we could just take this 2249, and multiply by 0.8. So we're going to borrow $179,920. You can also just subtract the 44,000 from that. You get the same thing. Um, keeping track of what's happening here, you have this much equity in your house. So we're going to assume the house is valued at 224,000. That 44,000 that you gave the bank that's still your money, right? That's still uh, contained in the value of the house. And the reason you're not charged the insurance um, on, on this 179,000 that you've borrowed is that if you default, the bank keeps that $44,000 cash you gave them, plus they have the house that they can then sell and recoup their losses. All right, so we're told that the monthly payment, we're gonna learn how to calculate this in a second, was this $1,021.57. Note they got a 30-year mortgage at this kind of high interest rate. That's pretty high, although that's where they're kind of at right now. Um, so how much are they going to pay for their house over the lifetime of the loan? Well, if they they spend all 30 years paying for this, and that's crazy. So we're going to do this per month. Then we just multiply the 30 years times um, the 12 months per one year. 
And then we're going to add to that the initial amount of cash they tossed into the house at the beginning. And we'll, we'll see how much this house costs. It's depressing. So what was that? 1021.57 times 360 plus 44,980. Did I get those numbers right? I did. Ooh, ooh, look at this number. 412,000. 500, oops, 745.2. 745.2. That is almost double the price of the home. It's almost, it's definitely double the amount they borrowed. It's painful. Now, of course, the thing I always, I always mention is, well, they had to live somewhere. So they were going to be renting or something at some point. Um, the other thing to think about is oftentimes this monthly payment, like I do this, I have an escrow account. So really the amount, some of that $910 for my mortgage um, is taxes and home insurance. So I get that rolled in to my mortgage payment and then the bank manages that. So I don't have to worry about it. So they pay the taxes that I owe whoever, and they pay, um, they pay the mortgage insurance or the, the home insurance. We don't know if that was included in this payment. This might be just the cost to finance this mortgage. And then the home insurance and the taxes are going to be added on top of that. It's going to be a higher amount. Now, did you, do you all see the formula here that we're working with? It's the monthly payments. So cost, total cost of the home. It's the monthly payments times the number of payments plus the down payment. Same thing as the cost of a car, just typically the, the numbers are a lot bigger. All right, so our author asked us to work through how to come up with a formula. I'm just gonna skip right to it, all right? When we talk about mortgages, we think about this as N times T, where N is the payments per year. Good job. And T is the number of years. I don't know why we use N here, why the author uses N, because we're always, mortgages are always monthly payments. There are some little strategies you can do where you make, um, where you pay twice a month, like you split your payment into the first month you pay half of the monthly payment and the second month you pay half the monthly payment and it saves you a ton of interest over the lifetime of the mortgage. But in order to do that, you have to do a double monthly payment at the beginning. That way you are, have always met the minimum required payment. So let's calculate a monthly payment. Um, so let's say that this family once a 15 year mortgage, they're gonna do the 20% down and they're gonna do the 5.5%. So remember the original amount after the 20% down was 179,000, what was it, 900? 920, okay. So they're gonna borrow $179,920, um, but they're gonna pay it in 15 years now. And it happens to be that that's the same interest rate, R equals 0 0.055. So let's calculate this new monthly payment. Um, here, we're gonna do negative 15 times 12, right? Cause it's 15 years and 12 months per year. So let me hop over to Desmos here. Uh, 179,920 times 0.055 divided by 12. All that divided by one minus one plus 0.055 divided by 12. Now, if you do that multiplication in the numerator, you're gonna need parentheses up here. Otherwise it drops the 12 out of that exponent. Okay. 
here's what I got. 1470.10 if we round to the nearest cent, which is what you should always do, round to the nearest cent. I did that super fast. Let me write it down. Does anyone, is everyone good? So check what's happening. Um, we're increasing the monthly payment, right? Before it was 10, 21, 57. So we're increasing the monthly payment by, we're paying an extra 448 a month and it's cutting the time in half that it takes to pay that. So instead of 30 years, we're now doing it in 15 years and we only had to pay $450 more roughly. So let's get the total cost for this one. Remember the total cost for um, the 30 year was that 412,000, 745 dollars and 20 cents. So for the 15 year, the total cost is gonna be this times the 15 times 12 plus the 44, um thousand whatever it was uh, i've got it here don't i do i have it here 44.980 so it's 1470.10 times 15 times 12 so that's the total of payments over the 15 years plus the down payment 44,980 so we're going to end up paying through it in 9598 I want to know what's the difference between those amounts. How much did we save by cutting the loan in half? Or by cutting the length of the loan in half? Wow, So huge amount of savings, but you have to have an extra $450 roughly, um, we'll say this, by paying 448.53 extra per month. And that's a lot of money. My monthly budget really probably couldn't handle that. Um, so that's the hard, hard choices you have to make is, hey, can I actually afford to pay that extra amount um, to get it done? The other thing you could do is get the 30 year loan and then just pay that extra amount. Uh, and then if you can't some month, you've got the you've got the freedom to not. But if you're like me, you're going to pay the minimum amount you have to pay. Um, and you'll you'll spend that extra somewhere else. OK, any questions you all have on this? How are you feeling? Um, I typically skip this animorization schedule. Um, it's actually it's it's really nice because it looks at like um it shows you how the interest goes but i tend to skip it i think i think what i would like to do is give you a, a chance to try the worksheet problem for three four so this is page um 38 and what i did is i copied from jackson college's web page the costs to attend college and I'm having you do a couple calculations for student loans and a total cost. I did not put in here a mortgage cost, a mortgage calculation. Um, they are essentially the same, right? It's just whether you're gonna be using uh, years times months times 12 
or are you going to be using the 120, the 10 year loan? So there's that. Um, that I'd like you to try. And then I just want to real quick note what's happening with the project. So you have most everything you need to do the project now. Well, you can do, let me just show you the first parts of the project you can do now. Um, Look at this beautiful thing. Awesome. Okay, let me finish class, sweets. Um, so you're gonna buy a car and do the car payment stuff. Um, I should put together, we're gonna put together these formulas in a second. Um, and early payoff calculations. And then you can now do the purchase a house thing with the different down payment amounts and the total costs and comparing the two. What we're gonna do on Monday is look at income taxes. And on Wednesday, we're gonna look at, no, I'm sorry. Monday, we're gonna look at stock. So task four stuff. Um, it's just basically teaching you how to read stock and kind of a real basic calculation of profit. It's the buy low, sell high strategy. There are tons of other ways to make money in the stock market. We're not going to look at those. I don't understand them. Uh, so I couldn't teach you those. And then um, three, six is the taxes one, the income tax problem. So we'll look at how that just a real basic calculation, assuming the taxable income. Taxes are far more complicated than what we're going to show you. Um, but at least you'll get a kind of a feel for how how things are how things are calculated. Uh, while I'm here, let's make sure we do the three six lesson check. I can't remember if I did the three three lesson check last time. I don't know if anyone remembers if we went over it. I mean, if anyone needs to needs to know that. Um, Wrong one. Um, three, four lesson check. Here it is. Okay, it's the monthly payment question, which we did. I believe it's the first one the student loan monthly payment. So not that it's the uh, capitalized interest one, so the 92.18. Let's make sure that didn't change. It may have changed. Do, 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 got it wrong. Should have been right. Let me fix it. Uh, edit. Okay, uh, you can now get that correct. Sorry to all of you that got it wrong, even though you should have gotten it right. Oh, I didn't save it. I'll go back and save it after I fix this one. Sometimes canvas, you know, sometimes, sometimes it just, you just want to whine, right? Like, ugh, we're not going to whine. I don't have any cheese to go with that wine. That's a problem. Actually, I do. I have some, I bought some cheddar cheese at uh, Aldi. Y'all heard of Aldi? It's such a great store. You go there and you feel like you're not even spending money and then you spend a ton of money and you wish you hadn't. Okay, it's fixed. And for those of you in the I-4 class, <laughs> oh yeah, Target is a great place too, man. That's it. You go to these places and you just, oof. 
The other one, I went to Costco the other day. Oh, good Lord, that's a that's a dangerous place. And you have to be careful with those because you don't ever know if they're actually a, a good deal. It just feels like it's a good deal because it's Costco or Sam's Club, right? But you got to do those those unit rate calculations to see if you're really doing it. You know, when you buy that 12 pack of pianos. Um, wait for it, come on. Okay. Ah, save it. There we go. Okay. So that should all be good for three, four. Let me know if I need to fix something for three, three. I think they're fixed. Um, and uh, what do you want to do? You want to try this or do you feel like you can try it on your own and we can check in on Monday? Okay, let me check three, three. Let's and then three. can you make it to where you can take it multiple times? Because I apparently typed it in wrong and it won't let me take it again. For which one? Three, four? Uh, I, four. Oh, yeah. Section three, four. I'm sorry. In class. Good, good. I, four. I fixed it for one, but not the other. Um. And then Latoya will pull up three, three. I, I, I know I forgot to do that last time. Stop it. Okay. All right, three, four is now fixed, I think. Nope. Okay, now it is. Um, let me just double check three, three and make sure that's unlimited. Unlimited, good, three, three is. And let's see what the answer is. Nice. Um, this was also the monthly payment. I don't remember the answer, so we're just going to look it up from the answer key this was that it was the um the monthly payment on some sort of car that we purchased and it was 408.58 408.58 uh per month 3.3 listen check awesome um, okay, so uh, how about I give you like five minutes? Oh, I was going to write up formulas. Maybe we'll write up the formulas at the beginning of class on Monday, because there's a ton to write up from 3.3 three and 3.4, and it might be nice to do them all at once. Um, how about I give you five minutes to see how far you can get on question 1A? And just make sure the question, I rewrote these questions a little bit this semester because they were a little funky last semester. And I wanna make sure that they make sense for you all. I should say is not charged curse words. Okay, I'll give you five minutes. Set a timer for five minutes.
How are we doing, y'all? Yes, definitely. I have answered zero emails from, <laughs> I don't want to admit how long it's been. Yes. Um, one thing, let me turn off this. One thing I've, I've had a bunch of emails that I need to get back to students on, and that is the midterm. There's a fair amount of people that missed the deadline to take it. And I haven't responded yet um, about what to do. And I've just trying to been thinking about what I should do. Okay, stop that. And one of the things I thought, um, because it feels a little unfair to anyone who, who met the deadline to take the exam, to then give someone else a chance to take the exam after the deadline, right? So I thought maybe I could extend the deadline and give those people that took the exam before the deadline a chance to take it again. And then those who didn't find the time to take the midterm exam by the deadline would have the chance to take it. Um, I don't know where the four of you sit with that and how that feels to you all, if that feels like a like a equitable answer to, to the midterm deal. Um, and I mean, the other thing is I haven't graded it yet. So there's a there's a bunch of questions that I have to manually grade myself. Um, I don't know. So we got one. Yes, let's do that option. I don't know where how anyone else feels on that. You said we'd get um, extra points for actually completing it on time. No, I said I'd give you a chance to take it a second time, oh. which, is, which is a little different. Like you get to retake it. And then if you're happy with what you did, you just keep what you got. Okay, so if you retake it and you do worse, which one are you going to keep? Great question. Um, <laughs> I think I, I would just take the highest score. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, Latoya, I'm, I do. You know what? Yeah. I, I agree. Okay. I, I figured most people would like, uh, who had had the taken it the first time around would like a second chance. Okay, Pina. Um, and I, I, you know, I feel like those who didn't take it would still feel like I was being relatively, okay, Pina, fair to them by giving them a second chance, by giving them a chance to take it the first time. You know, I'd be interested to hear from those people. So I'm going to send out a, a mass email about that. I will, um, I will and set that up um, and see how that goes. The other thing, encouragement thing for you all is that that, that exam is 10% is of the grade. So it affects your grade, but it's not going to fail you at all. Um, if you got a zero on it, your grade would drop 10% total. And that's if you got a zero. Um, so it it could, it, like if you're at the 2.0 level and you're like just barely passing the class, it would drop you into failing. If you're at like the 3.0 level, it might drop you to a 2.0 and so on and so forth. But um, it won't like guarantee fail you. Not turning in the projects will, or doing a really bad job on the projects will fail you in the class, uh, hands down. Um, so uh, just, um, yeah, so so none of the none of the exams are graded yet. There's there's a bunch of sentences you had to type in, I think, that I have to manually grade. Um, and then there's also potential partial credit, like if you um, put in a decimal or whatever. So let me put that together. I'll send that out today for you all of um, what that option is. Um, and if anyone watching the video uh, has a problem with what I'm offering or what I'm suggesting, just send me an email uh, uh, on your thoughts. I am going to, um, once once I'm free of children for the afternoon, I will sit down and write write back emails to everyone 
um, it's the backlog is kind of bad. Uh, okay, did did you all get for a that you took the cost per year? Per, go ahead, Jennifer. What you got? Oh, I was just um, gonna answer the question. <laughs> oh, okay, go for it. Uh, I got forty three thousand three hundred sixty one dollars and forty four cents. Isn't this painful? I mean, it this is. is now, now this is if you live on campus. Yep. Do you live on campus, Jennifer? Absolutely not. Okay, I was gonna say. I was like, oh, okay. so so if you were not living on campus, you would subtract these two numbers, which is a large portion of the cost. I don't know what's up with transportation here, honestly. Um, I think this is an estimation that you're going to spend. I, I, I don't know what, what this includes. You might be able to, I'm, I'm guessing if you live off campus, the thought is this might cost even more. Because if you're living on campus, we assume you're from far away and you go home on the weekends. I know that's what a lot of um, campus students do, but boy, that's painful. Um, okay, so that's that number. And then it says calculate the total cost of a degree, wait, Calculate total cost, assume a student completes it in two years and lives on campus. Okay, and then in the community. So we're just going to subtract these amounts. Was that $10,000? I'm coming, baby. So we're gonna subtract 20,000 from this amount because it's this is for one year, 10,000. So for two years would be 20,000. So this is a lot more reasonable-ish. Still, it's like, ouch, you could be working somewhere. And, you know, even, even Target these days is paying like 15 bucks an hour. You could make okay money and not be this much in debt. All right. Um, so you're going to use this number for on-campus students, this number for off-campus students, and you're going to calculate the interest that would be charged before your first payment, if you take two and a half years before the loan goes into repayment. Man, the English on this needs to be fixed. It's really bad. So here's your R, here's your T, and remember you're using the simple interest rate. Okay, uh, I'll give you like three minutes to, to run those two calculations. So you should have two answers here. Set a timer for two minutes, three minutes. Set a timer for three minutes, please. Yes, replace it. Okay.
So that was three minutes. Was that enough time? Here's how I'd organize <clears throat> how I would organize this. Um, I might use housing for on-campus students and C for community students with two different interest rates. So <laughs> no, it's going to be pretty awful because this is a ton of money you're borrowing. Now, this isn't realistic um, because we're assuming you bought, this assumes you borrow the money at the very beginning of the school year. You borrow the full amount that you need for all two years, and then the interest is being charged immediately on that full amount. What you would really do is borrow um, the 10,000 for the first semester. So this 10,000 would be at the full two and a half years. And then this next 10,000 would be like two years. And then the next 10,000 would be a year and so on and so forth. So it'd be a little bit less, but not a ton less. Um, I don't know, did you, what'd you get? Like lots of money. Uh, what was that? 43, 361.44 times 0.0429. Is, is that right? 0.05, ooh, gross. 0.529 times 2.5. So what, 4,909? For the on-campus student, 0.6 that total extra cash um again this is the high end and then just change this to a 20 same thing 26 45 10 is that what is that what you had jennifer oops 26, 45, 10. Oh, okay. Yes, Peanut. Oh, yeah, you could do that. Um, let's see. Um, to do it monthly, uh, you should get roughly the same amount. Um, like, if we went back here, Right, we calculated the monthly payment or the amount you charge each month and we did all this stuff and then multiplied by the total time and got this. Um, we should get, you should get roughly the same amount. If we, if we did this times this for one year, then divided that by the 12 and then multiplied that by the however many years, should be pretty close. Um, okay. So that's the stuff. Now notice we're now gonna calculate the monthly payment for a direct unsubsidized loan. We're gonna assume it's a 10 year loan. And then the note, this P is the original amount of the loan plus this interest we just calculated. So we have two monthly payments to calculate, the housing monthly payment, and then the, um, the community monthly payment. Uh, we'll do that over here. And we're going to use this 4,909 added to the 43, 361.44, and this 26.45 added to the 23 thing. And that's going to be the deal. Um, 
I think we're kind of running out of time here. Uh, well, I mean, we're okay. You, you all want to take five minutes and see if you can't get one of these done? And then we check it. Let's do that. I'll leave this up so you can see it. So a timer for five minutes.
Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I wrote down the two formulas and I didn't want to have to write this twice. So I just used pH again. Does this look okay for the housing monthly payment cost? Is that kind of like what you're doing? I love Desmos because I can just type this in exactly as I see it. Ouch, did you all get $595 a month? I mean, this, like, when I see this number, it just like makes my heart sink. I think of all the students currently living in housing, and I hope they're getting um, subsidized loans. Even still, it's not gonna make that big of a difference. Like if you're paying every penny in loans, I mean, $500 a month just to service a loan that's not, that had better have gotten you a degree that earns you more money. I can't tell you how many students, um, don't make it through the classes and they're not going to have this much money tied up in debt. Maybe they'll have one semester or two semesters worth of money in debt. And you're just like, you're just paying for nothing. Um, it's awful. So that's that one. Is that what y'all got? Or did I not give you enough, you all enough time to try it out? And then this one, significantly cheaper, almost half the amount. Um, there's some like there's some ways to pay for college. Like if you serve in the military, um, your VA loans are—I forget exactly how it is. I've talked to some students. Um, some veterans where you're not having the government this is just like the benefit for for working for the government is they pay your student loans and there's all kinds of little different stipulations and things like certain gpas and all that um but that is one great way to get college paid for it's just you have to serve in the military which may or may not be a thing you want to do <laughs> Uh, questions, comments, concerns on that? This is per month. And then the total cost for both types of students is we're just going to multiply each of these monthly payments by the total amount of payments they're gonna make. We don't have to worry about the, the interest because it was capitalized, we didn't pay it. So we're paying it over the lifetime of the loan. Look at that, oh, this housing student is gonna pay $60,000 for their two year degree. And the community student is gonna pay $32,000 for their degree. And that's where I'm like, this thing better improve your life, whatever this degree you're getting. Because that's a ton of money that you're going to be paying back. Um, you know, you really, it, long gone are the days where you can just go to college and figure out what you want to do by taking a bunch of classes. Your project, uh, no, it doesn't ask you to do this. Never mind. Yes, it does. Your project asks you to calculate your monthly income on the degree you're headed towards. That's task 
four. I don't have it up anymore. And the last part of that task says, is it worth it for you to get this degree? Well, here's the thing you got to think about. You're going to school to get this particular degree, to get in this particular job that's going to get you this specific amount of income. If you're paying out of pocket for all of this, student loans and such, this is what you can expect if you're paying at all as your monthly payment when you get out. Talk to me, Jennifer. Okay, so I see how yours is like 0.96 or whatever, and then 0.8. Um, I just typed in like the totals times by 120. So my numbers are 60,114 and then 32,386.8. Are those still going to be correct? 100% correct. So what happened is if I, I took the formula here and just did times 120, yeah, and it's because of the rounding. Yeah, you're, you're totally fine with that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Good. Okay, y'all. Um, great work. Um, watch for that email from me. I'm going to send it through Canvas because that's the easiest way to email everyone. So I'll send a, I don't know how that gets to you all, um, about the midterm. Um, I'll probably give another week deadline for it. So like you have, or like Sunday night kind of thing. Um, I may change some of the numbers just slightly so that it's not exactly the same exam so you can't just take your previous answers and you know rewrite them but maybe that's mean i don't know um so watch for that email sometime later today maybe later tonight i have a question um about Please. that because mm -hmm. i don't if i got a good grade i really don't want to sit through another three-hour exam because what? it took me well over two hours. So I've got like a number in mind that if I've got that, I'm not going to retake it. Um, do you plan on grading them before doing that? That's a very good thing to, for me to do. Yes, I will grade them and then send out the email. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. You are most welcome. Any other questions you'll have? If not, take off. Have a great day. Uh, what is today? Is today Wednesday? Is it Wednesday already? Oh, good. And uh, we will see you all on Monday. <laughs>